Good day. This is August 31, 2021. I'm about three hours into the White Otter Turtle River first day of canoe paddle. It's about 12.30 and we just stopped at a... This was supposed to be an island site. Looks like it's been burned down and not very attractive so I just found a little place on the side of the lake there to have some lunch. Had some PB&J and a couple slices of cheese and half of a Hudson Bay bar. So done about uh, six and a half miles today. Um, the day was supposed to start at uh, seven o'clock taking a shuttle up here to Pekagoning Lake but Canoe Canada called me yesterday on the drive-in saying would I mind going at 8 instead. Um, one of their vans broke down and they had a second group that was coming at 8 so I shuttled with them which was fine. Uh, just got me in a, probably an hour and a half later than I expected but this trip I'm in no no big rush. Um, so we drove about an hour to the put in at Pekagoning, a little creek system or river, and loading up the canoe. I took care of falling in the lake right off. <laughs> I stepped into the canoe after thing, everything was loaded and got tippy and it was going to go over, so I jumped out and got my pants and butt wet, but lost a little dignity. That was gone a long time ago. <laughs> But anyway, since then, uh, of course, uh, the other mandatory thing I've done is getting lost. Um, at this point, I'm heading up that away way to, uh, I think it's called Smirch Lake. That's the goal for today. You can't really tell, looking to the south, that all of Quetico is on fire. The driver told us that uh, roughly a quarter of Quetico has burned which is unbelievable. We're talking 250,000 acres, if he's accurate. Yeah, so there's a fire ban here, no campfires. So everything is camp stove, but at least it's open. Quetico shut down. Sunny day, probably mid 70s, nice little breeze, but certainly no significant wind to worry about yet. The forecast says Maximum winds for the week are supposed to be 5 to 10 miles an hour, so, and only one day predicted for rain. Water levels are very low this year, according to the locals, the lowest they've ever seen. So, two, three feet below normal. So, I'm going through this little archipelago. These little rocks are trying to connect. I suspect the campsites here are going to be a little more rugged than Quetico and definitely more so than Boundary Waters. That's one of them. I showed you the other one that was all burned out. So a couple of rocks up there, probably a fire pit. Not much. Okay, time to head north again. Still heading north on I think it's the Turtle River, heading up towards whatever lake, Smidge Lake, something like that. But look at these cliffs. Easy 50 feet tall, straight and vertical. I'm not sure what time it is. I've done probably 10 or 10 and a half miles so far today. About three of it was a detour getting lost, so I'm a little behind where I expected to be. But my arms and shoulders are pretty exhausted using the kayak paddle. 
definitely uses a lot more muscles than I'm used to. I switched out to the single bladed paddle for a while, but my stroke is pitiful. So I'm back to the kayak paddle. Anyway, there's about a mile, mile and a half north of here. There's an island campsite marked that I might just pop in there and say that's enough of a day. That's the plan, at least. It's right before the portage into whatever the next lake is. Part of the problem today is we've only done one portage, so it's been all paddling. So, later on in the trip, I know there's a lot more portaging. Nice to have a mixture. Finally, the second portage of day one coming up. We'll see what that looks like when I get close. I won't be paddling up it, that's for sure. Whether I can walk it up, I'm not sure. Let's see. It was one of the most insane portages I've ever done. Thank you very much. I'll whack by. Walk back up it. Whack back up it. I just took the canoe the first time. The uh, portage trails are actually marked with a sign. It's a very small, subtle sign. So here's the first mountain goat. And I came down that way, which I think is the right way. This way might be easier, but it could also be treacherously slippy. There's moss here. It's about a 45 degree angle. I think I'll take these stair steps up. I don't like the looks of that. Up. Up is the word we want. Okay. Jeez. I could scout up there, but I came through here. This is not too bad. This is the next fun climb. We're descent now. It's not a long portage, but goodness. Not an easy one. And down, down, down. This part is nice, but potentially very slippery. Yep, there we go. Man, this apparently should have been the landing. Makes sense. Now we're going to end over there. So I saw this. I don't know if you can see down into the water, but it's pretty deep there. I thought there's no way I can 
get out very easily there. So I went down to over here, and that means another cliff to climb and a ankle breaker rock boulder to go through. That's what this is. Yeah, boulder over this guy and then slide down. And then watch your step through here. And back. Sadly, this is going to be a triple portage, I think. I found this nice rod and reel just lying here. I think I'll just leave that because I don't have a fishing license. And they say the game wardens here are not pleasant. So if I got caught with fishing gear, it might be trouble. So I got to this island campsite. Nobody's here. Nice sandy landing. Sandy beach. Sand everywhere. But it's a nice little cooking area. Someone left a, a grate there. Alright, I'm going to set up camp, get out of these wet shoes, and relax a bit. Good morning, this is September 1st, 2021. And this is the day I woke up to. I'm ready to travel, but I can't see a darn thing. <laughs> I probably went to bed last night at maybe 7.30. I was pretty exhausted. That's not good on day one of this trip. So I'm going to have to see what to do about that. My thought was starting early today it would give me a more normal day since I started kind of late yesterday. I was on the water at 7.30. Found the portage in the fog, so I saw that little sign and started it. And about 100 yards in, it ends in this swamp with a little six inch trail hugging the swamp that you have to climb up three foot boulders, scale up rocks, or walk through the swamp. So, first time through, I walked through the swamp and I was up to my hip in water, hanging onto the rock on the right hand side. And the uh, made it through. I took the heavy pack with me in both paddles and the plan was to go back for the small pack and canoe the second time around. So then another 20 yards down the, the path um, there's a big tree down straight ahead and it looks like the path is supposed to head up right up into the hill around the tree so I start climbing that and finally decide after about three or four minutes this can't be the path and I look down and see the path goes right through the down tree. It looks like someone sawed the tree down right on top of the path. Doesn't make any sense. So found my way back to the path and then the rest was okay. Ups and downs. Pretty good climb two times uh, and then a boulder field to get through and then ends in this boulder field. It's pretty impressive. And so then I went back for the canoe in the other pack and I knew there was no way I could do all together. So I got to the first boulder to climb up and left the canoe there and poured it down past the down tree with the pack and then came back for the canoe and was able actually to stay on the right side of the swamp hugging the, the rock with the canoe. Um, so I got to the tree, put the canoe on top of the tree, went under the tree or over the tree, got the pack and continued on. So. Uh, difficulty wise, I'd put it on a 9 out of 10. Easy. Not so, we're heading down that way, I think, down to the south, if I'm not mistaken, towards uh, White Otter Lake. This is amazing to me.
just gorgeous. Like the reflection of the rock on the water, just the mirror. This is a little river coming in from Dibble Lake. I think there's a big wide portage on the left hand side. I saw a couple of power boats on this lake. I imagine the way to get them in here was to portage across from Dibble. So they'd have to have a substantial portage to get through. Hopefully it'll be a nice easy one this time. This is the upper side of that portage going into Dibble. Apparently, <laughs> there was a real portage trail that I guess I got too close to the falls. I never saw. I, know, I can see down into the water. It's just too deep. So I came over here to where it was kind of shallow, but then had to scale up these rocks throw the packs up here, lift the canoe, drag it over, set it up here on the rock. But looking now over there, I can actually see the sign for the Portage Trail way, way on the other side. Paddling through Dibble Lake. And there's rock coming out of the lake. So many places. And rock right underneath the water so many places. I haven't scraped yet, but had to hit the brakes and turn around. Some huge bedrock was like six inches below the water. And you could see boat scrapes on it several places. So this area is known for its sandy beaches. I thought that could be Cayman Islands. So I'm going to stop here and get some lunch. I'm getting a little tired. Need some energy. Need to take a break. And this looked like a convenient place to land without having to navigate any rocks or anything. I'll see if I can find a nice rock to set up lunch on. This is the uh, first portage out of Dibble into No Name Lake. I'm going back for my second carry. This was actually a really nice portage with a reasonable trail that you could follow and no mountains to climb. It had a uh, old hunter's shack or trapper's cabin right on the trail. I'm going to pass here in a second. Not a bad little cabin. It's seen better days. The floor is shot. It's got an old wood burner stove and a bed. And I hope this comes through. With my sunglasses on, it is crystal clear. Nice meandering stream and waterfalls heading down. If you don't mind some man made amenities, <laughs> chairs, table, clothesline, fire grate, benches. Yeah, so if you don't mind those things, sandy beach, <laughs> holy smokes. <sighs> yeah, I was ready for this day to end. Check the gyps and it says 17 miles today. So that's a lot. This morning it's 6.30. 
Couldn't wait to get up. Already eaten, packed up, checked the campsite. So this morning, I just head around that point to the left, go straight across. That should be McQuat's Castle. Tour that for a bit. Just north of there, there's an old abandoned, obviously, POW camp. There must be some relics in there to look at. So spend a little time just relaxing this morning and then head north along the creek system towards Elsie, I think, is the goal today. So I made it across the rough water crosswind and uh, came across there. It looks super calm. But in the middle of the lake, it was roly-roly. So this is the castle. They're obviously working on it. They got things roped off. I think that's just a suggestion, though. Uh, I see. They don't want you walking on the front. They're replacing some of the boards on the deck. Supposedly built this entirely by himself. People have come and defaced it over the years. But definitely the original timbers. My goodness. I love the wood floors. to have a huge family. So we've got two staircases. Pretty steep stairs. Man. Well, this is the third floor. There's a whole another room over here. I didn't realize that. Okay. That's crazy. There's some of the back side of the house. He was a pioneer in the D-shaped logging, so rounded on the outside and squared on the inside. So I'm just north of the castle. I don't know for a fact exactly where the World War One POW camp was. I think it might have been right there. Looks like an area that was cleared out. Looks man-made. Well, there's some old structure there. Part of some sort of door. And some sort of metal can. Looks like a pit. I wonder what was down there. I think it people locked up maybe. I don't know if that's part of the stove or just a metal barrel. This was definitely a stove. See the stove pipe. Looks like a 
another stove pipe there. All these barrels. Basically, you call this place trashed out. Property of D I R E R Oil Limited. So oil cans. So preparing for the Nora Lake portage. There's two portages. I decided to take the long one because it saves me some paddling on both ends. I saw this convenient sign on a tree from the lake. I saw a man carrying a canoe. I said this must be the portage. So I unloaded everything, took the food pack. And so let me just take this to the portage because I stopped a little short of it. And I get up there and it's actually an arrow pointing to the left. There's where the portage is. <laughs> I think the last time I recorded I was way over there and I needed to be here. And I'd already portage one bag across. And uh, so then I had the canoe and my light bag, or heavy bag, and two paddles and map and miscellaneous stuff and the landing was horrible so like an idiot I tried to step into the canoe from higher ground and I went wibble wobble wibble wobble and just jumped out before I tipped the whole canoe so I am officially soaking wet from head to toe so now I don't need to worry about putting on rain gear I thought I'd do that after this portage Oof, this was a long day. <laughs> uh, Jip said I did, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's 20 or 21 miles. I think it's 21 miles. And it feels like it. You would not know it, this is on Elsie Lake. The wind in this lake was ridiculous. It wasn't white caps, but it was one foot rollers. And the waves generally were coming from the south. I'm heading south. So they're generally in my face, but then they'd crash off the rocks and crisscross, and it was just a hodgepodge of, of crazy waves. And there really wasn't any place to camp on this lake until you got to the south end and I pulled in two different times to get out of the wind just to so I could look at the map and see where I was and there really wasn't any place that I could stop and so I, I kept on finally came to this pretty glorious beach campsite not much in the way of amenities but there is a little rickety table and as long as you don't mind camping on sand which I really don't it's a nice place. There was one portage. None of them were terribly difficult today, but um, medium long half mile or so. And there was one there. I was just carrying the, the blue bag and the paddles and my water bottle and uh, went down this little slope, put my foot down and completely lost my footing. And instead of, it was going downhill, instead of falling on my back, which you think you would, I fell face forward and slammed my hand into the rock. And I felt my pinky finger bending, bending, bending. And somehow I was able to just instinct pull that finger out before it snapped. But I, I mean, I felt like it was seconds from snapping. So my little... Gout knuckle looks even worse than before and it's kind of swollen and um, dinged up my 
knees and legs pretty good, but nothing broken. You know, just just pain. <laughs> so anyway, to be honest with you, I don't know what time it is, but I'm making dinner. I got camp set up. Um, so I'm gonna make salami and cheese quesadillas. That's what it looks like to start with. I'm gonna fry it up in the frying pan and hopefully it tastes really good. Cutting it up in a second. See, I'm right about here on the map. Plan to just take this portage over, head north again, loop around, and uh, investigate this abandoned camp. Apparently this was some big resort that Canoe Canada used to fly people into and it's supposed to have incredible beaches. Some people call it the Caribbean of the North. I'm at the end of Elsie Lake getting ready to portage into Mabel Lake. Just thought I would take a video of this lake today. Yesterday it was a roller coaster. The wind really wasn't that bad, but the waves were, like I said yesterday, just real crisscrossy. And I never felt unstable in this little light boat, uh, even going crosswind or, um, you know, cutting the waves at 45 degrees. But it was a mental strain to make sure that you predicted each wave, looking forward five waves to see when the next big one came in, turning into that wave before you could hit uh, crosswind again. Power lines crossing the creek. I followed the portage trail and it ended in this boulder garden. which didn't seem right. About a hundred yards up the trail, there was a cut off to the left, more of a clearing. And I opted to take the trail that was more defined and I ended up at the bottom of that rock field. So with one pack on, it wasn't too terrible to rock hop, but I wonder if there's a better way for the canoe. So I walked up along the power line trail here, see if I could find something. Didn't really find anything that looked like a bypass portage trail. So I'm going to head back down this rock garden. Go on the trail and take that bypass and see where it ends up. I'm halfway down this boulder field right now. Way up there where the lake starts is where I left the first packs. Or the pack and life jacket and water bottle. I don't know if this is just a low water issue. Maybe normally you can get in here. Or if this is the way it always is. So I just paddled across Sanford Lake. Before that, there was the crazy rock yard portage. I think that was into Mabel. And then between Mabel and Sanford, there's a creek that doesn't have any portage marked. But low water this year, it was flowing water at the top end, but rocks and boulders at the bottom. A boulder field like the previous portage and no marked portage around it. So that was difficult. Boulder hopping again. Uh, only fell one time and didn't break anything. <laughs> but 
pretty sure I scraped up that canoe pretty well. But anyway, the goal for this morning was to cross Sanford to an old uh, lodge that Canoe Canada used to run. And that was just a straight shot. And the wind has picked up. You really, just looking at the lake, you can see like a flow of water going across. But you don't really see white caps or waves, but it is dicey. Dicey getting across there. And it's quartering into the waves and paddling with the waves when you're trying to change direction, then turning around and quartering, quartering back in. So pretty stressful. It was about a three mile paddle. But uh, thankfully I did find the lodge. Looks like some people have use some of their docking facilities to put their boats in. So I haven't been up here. Let's go take a look around. I see some cabins. Quite a few cabins. Oh, yeah. Come out to this side to see when it might be safe to paddle again. I appreciate the wind better over here. Look at all these cabins. Wow, nice dock over here. Look at all these boats. Several docks. Yeah, maybe you can appreciate the wind better from here. I wonder how many people know about this. It's tucked away. I couldn't even see it from the lake. Paper over all the windows. Ah, wide open. Man, this is the main lodge. No way. Still liquor, Jack Daniels, something else. Anybody home? Wow. Tip Top Lodge. So I'm still here at Tip Top Lodge. Let's see if that wind dies down. It's a convenient place to stay for the night. We don't even have to put up a tent. Wind probably wouldn't be too bad heading straight that way, right into the wind, but more than likely, if I get up at before dawn tomorrow, good chance there will be completely flat water and I can get through this big lake. I'll take you into my proposed sleeping quarters. I've got my laundry hung up to dry. All my gear set out, stuff that I'll need, stuff that I won't need. Here's my lunch supplies, my little table to cook on. All in all, pretty nice. It's a little before 6 o'clock and I'm packed up and ready to go. Leaving Tip Top Lodge. And right now, the day looks miserable, We're very overcast, cloudy. But right now the waves are look very manageable. So my goal is to get moving ASAP. It's about 
I battled, even though the wind didn't look that bad. And when I got here, it didn't look bad when I looked back. But I was not comfortable. I never felt like I was going to tip or anything, but it's a long lake, Sanford Lake. And if I got a strange wind or strange wave, uh, it's a long way from shore. And so I battled my way to one island, which was about two kilometers from where I started. Checked the map, got a drink of water, kept on going to the next island, which was actually marked on my map as a great campsite. Couldn't find the campsite. Went to the leeward side of the island where it's supposed to be. Didn't see any path or any campsite. Circled the whole island. Uh, and then came back and just beached the canoe on a rock. And then there was a path leading up and up and up to this hilltop with a really nice campsite. Cliff face on the uh, south side, south and east side. Um, water's crystal clear. Um, so I debated, you know, do I set up camp here? It was like nine o'clock, 8.30 maybe. But the wind was up and it was drizzling and I was, <laughs> right before it really started to drizzle, I decided I'm getting hot. So I took my rain jacket off and then it started to drizzle and there was no convenient way to put the rain jacket back on while I was trying to paddle and stay <laughs> upright. So I got a little bit soaked, definitely soaked from the waist down, and I had my life jacket on, so maybe not soaked in my torso, but arms and belly area were soaked. Not that cold. It's probably 60 degrees. Uh, but uh, not very pleasant. After I get out of this lake, um, the rest of the, the way is tiny little lakes and river systems, so the wind's not going to be an issue, <laughs> I say. <laughs> I don't expect the wind to be an issue. So I'm only about two kilometers from finishing Sanford Lake. I did about three miles today, and I've got about a mile and a half to go. Uh, so my plan is to, I go ahead and set up tent, set up the tarp, because it was drizzling, got the rain fly on, got everything set up, got out of my wet clothes, got in the sleeping bag, warmed up a bit, and uh, then we'll just see how the day goes. It's about 10.30 now. If the day turns nice, like right now, looking out of my rain fly, it, it looks okay. It's not raining. Um, if it turns nice and the wind goes away, I might pack up and paddle five or six miles into Wasp Lake, which would be the next convenient place to camp. The day is moving on. I'm guessing it's close to noon now, maybe 11-ish. Anyway, I've already had lunch, had some sauce, uh, salami and cheese tortilla wraps. And this is the day that's coming, I believe. There is some sunshine. And this is the day I'm leaving behind, according to the wind. Here's a nice cliff face. Yeah. It's 20 feet at least down. I don't know if you can appreciate the rocks down there, but again, this is crystal clear water. So here's my little campsite in the sunshine. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, got my wet clothes hung up on my tarp line tarp over the tent. Tent is nice and cozy. Uh, where I came from is about as far north as you can see here. There's one little bay. I think 
I might be able to see where the boats are tied up. Some white spots there at Tip Top Lodge. But only about three miles so far today. Definitely, <laughs> it looks like nothing. It looks like nothing looking this way. But that's what it looked like when I started this morning too. I don't know. Basically I just don't want to be caught in the middle of big water upside down in my boat. Started paddling. Even though it looked calm at that island, it was rough. And it is gotten rougher as the day went on. Luckily I got out of the big lake. So now I actually made it all the way to Wasp Lake, which was my initial plan. So I'm pretty happy about that. Before it starts raining, I'm going to get my tent and rain fly put up. All right, Saturday night, day five of this trip complete. And the good news is it's beautiful. A few clouds in the sky, the sun just gone down in the west. Just a wisp of breeze, no waves. Let me check the GPS. It says 750. It says we've done 68 and a half miles, which is more than I expected for the whole trip, and I still got a day to go, and a day and a little bit to go. Uh, reflections on the trip? It's been very remote. Jim Clark used to say, you don't want to take this trip, it's all trashed out. I haven't found that at all. I have found evidence of civilization. Some really nice cabins on the lake, boats on the shore, but as far as people, none. The last people I saw was on Clearwater right beside White Otter Castle. And since then I've seen nobody. Campsites are nice, portages are rough. Nowhere near as well maintained or trodden as Quetico, certainly not as good as anything in the Boundary Waters. So, isolation, we got that in spades. Haven't passed a canoe, haven't even seen a fishing boat on the water in the last three days. Bugs have been zero. I just now look and I see some bugs flying around. I've got maybe four or five mosquito bites total. That's not too bad. Haven't used bug spray once. Had some great meals from Camp Chow in the Gunflint Trail. The best one was the chicken stroganoff with morel mushrooms. It was fantastic. Next best was their chicken curry. Really good, really good. So tomorrow I've got probably about a 10 mile day planned. And if it stays like this, that should be super easy. I'll take my time and enjoy the trip and then that leaves me Monday with just about a maybe a three or four mile paddle out to meet my driver at 9 a.m. So trips wrapping up. So it's about 7.15 Sunday morning. I'm getting ready to leave my little island campsite on Wasp Lake. Don't quite know what the day's gonna do today. Let's head south. I just did the second portage of the day. Actually the first one that's marked on the map. I think this is called... Gamble River? Um, I can't really tell. But uh, just went through this area right here. And on this point here there's this cool isolated cabin in the woods. I just talked to the gentleman that owns the cabin. I suspect this man might be a fishing guide. 
He had a fishing boat on the north side of the portage. He's got one, two, three more boats there. A ton of canoes, other boats. Huh. He's got what looks to be his main house. Look at all those coolers up there. Yeah, this guy's in business. I'm currently searching for the next portage on the map. I'm afraid this is it. I think with the very low water getting to the start of this portage is not going to be easy. I already pulled up what I thought would should be the creek and dead ended, but that was quite a ways down the water there. I kept going back and forth looking for a sign, any sign. I got no signs. So this is going to be a slog fest. That's it. Well, I searched and searched. Could not find any decent trail, so I just started walking up the creek. And there is a modicum of a trail. You finally get out of the knee-deep muck and you can follow the rocky brook there into this beaver dam. That's what's caused the low water down there. And then it ends in this nasty pond. I think I'm gonna paddle across instead of trying to portage because it looks nasty on the shore. So I'll paddle as far as I can, get out and keep going. Well, I finally made it to the camp on Dashwa Lake. Some of the most brutal portages I've ever done. One in particular, it's a pretty exhausting day. I think I'm about maybe a mile from the takeout. So, unless it's a hurricane tomorrow, it shouldn't be too much trouble paddling that last little distance to the takeout. So I just left my last campsite. Sunrise just starting over yonder, it's about 7.30. And pretty dense fog. I can see the island to the south where I tried to find a campsite yesterday. And I got my GPS uh, and my compass. I know I'm heading south, a tad west, so I'm just going to start paddling. I've got to meet my driver in an hour and a half. And up ahead, I bet you it's going to be a gorgeous day. There's no wind on the lake compared to yesterday and the day before. Definitely time to paddle. Well, I reached the end of my paddle. Coming in that fog was crazy. Even though I had my compass and knew the general direction, I missed about three points that I should have been one side and I was on the other side. And only with GPS did I get into the general vicinity of where I was supposed to take out. And then I had no idea. You can't see. I mean, that boat is... 50 feet away, so you can see that, that island, 150, and then most of it was like this, it's just paddling in this ethereal mist. <laughs> it was, I don't know if it's hallucinating, but I was seeing things that weren't there. I was seeing flashes of light, they weren't there. Uh, at one point I saw a long dock going out into the lake, I thought, oh, well, this must be it. So I paddled up to it, and then it was gone. It just disappeared. I don't know what I was seeing. Seeing things that the brain wanted to see. But uh, the only thing that saved me was this boat was coming in. I heard the squeal of brakes and gravel. And otherwise, I would have kept on going down that way, because I thought that's more or less where I needed to be. So he saved me quite a bit of paddling, having to come back here and find this. So that's it. Jip says 84.25 miles total, so about 30% more than what I anticipated. But that's okay. It was a good trip. Perfect, for the most part, perfect weather, except for the wind a couple days. Rugged portages. Worse than, overall for a trip, I'd say hardest portaging I've done. Less used. I would say this trip was 
despite what it looks like right now. Uh, way more primitive, way more isolated than um, Quetico, certainly way more, way more than Boundary Waters from the um, White Otter Lake all the way to the last portage yesterday, second to last portage yesterday. I, I saw no one. That was like three and a half days. All told, I saw one, two, three people camping in the roughly seven days. So hardly used, very lightly used. So yeah, I, I like this trip. I would like it more with a partner. Maybe next time we can arrange that. Okay, I'm going to sign out. This is Monday morning, waiting for my driver.